Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. This tutorial will be a quick one on how to import references into EndNote on Mac. So my previous video was on Windows. I realized that there are some slight differences between Mac and Windows. So for everyone with a Mac laptop, MacBook Pro or anything, we'll go through that side. So to start off with, I've got three different windows at the moment here. I've got my EndNote X8, which I got through Griffith University. I've got my Downloads folder in Finder open up. And I've also got my web browser, um, which I use Google Chrome. I've got two tabs open. I've got Google Scholar, and I've also got the Griffith Library resources. So to start off with, we will start with Google Scholar. We'll go uh, Video Podcast in Education find us a nice little article doesn't really matter what it is K2012 has been uh, featuring quite heavily in my videos so we'll keep using that so similar to the Windows um, way that we do it we uh, we click on site at the bottom of the article that we want to cite click on site when it loads up. Um, go down here, click on EndNote. If you want to manually copy and paste, you can click on here, but it doesn't really matter which one is selected. Click on EndNote here, and this will start a download of a .enw file from Google. Um, what this is, unfortunately, unlike Windows, we can't just click on this and have it brought straight into our library. Um, there's a few security settings from unidentified developers which make life more difficult. So what we'll do, now that that is downloaded, we'll go over to our EndNote library. Head over here, we'll go to References, uh, no, File. We'll go to File, Import. Click on that. And then this will bring up our um, Finder folder. We want to go down to options in the bottom left corner of this window and make sure that it has EndNote import selected, not PDF file or folder or anything else. We'll go EndNote import, import all, no transition, and then we'll select the import that we just downloaded or the file that we just downloaded. So this will drag in uh, our import into our library. From here, similar to... Um, Windows, you can right click on that reference, go to attach file, um, and if you've downloaded the PDF file, you can actually attach it to that. So that's how to go from Scholar into EndNote Library. We'll go from the Griffith Library into EndNote Library. Um, so we'll go uh, video podcast in education. We'll search, search in here for one. Once again, if you are off campus, you can run a VPN. Um, it does mean your internet is a little bit slower, but you get a whole bunch of access to uh, a lot more resource, resources. So effectiveness of podcasts, sure. We will we'll download this one for today. So once again... Find the reference that you want. On the right-hand side, there's three little dots. Um, as you highlight over it, it says More Actions. Click on that. Go down to EndNote. And that should start downloading a .ris file. So you can see the file name here uh, ends in .ris. Once again, Mac, it's not super friendly, so we can't just automatically click on it and have it import. So we'll go back over to our EndNote library, go to File Import again, search for the file that we just downloaded, so export EndNote.ris, go to Options, and now we need to change our import options from EndNote Import down to Reference Manager RIS. You can see here it's a different file type. So the one from Griffith Library is .ris, the one from Google Scholar is .enw. So to import our RIS file, we need to change our import options to RIS. Um, once that's done, we'll go import, 
and then this will bring in our newest uh, resource import. Now to opening up Word. So now that we've gotten our two different resources, we'll open up our we'll open up our Word doc. I'll uh, make this a little bigger. Take up the full screen. So now what we'll do, once again, the magic of computers, EndNote automatically comes up in our ribbons tab here. So if we want to insert a citation, um, go to the EndNote X8 tab, head over to Insert Citations. Actually, before we do that, select whatever style you're working in, whether it's APA 6 or Chicago. For education, we're working in APA 6. So select APA 6, make sure it stays on APA 6. Go to Insert Citation, and then we'll search all of our citations by hitting A and we'll insert K, 2012. Brilliant work, so that's automatically populated. If we have done a direct quote and we want to add page numbers to this reference, what we can do, um, we can have, so say direct quote here, by get K 2012, we can right click on the reference, go down to edit citations, and then head down to more. This also works on Windows, I have tested it on Windows. And then for this reference, we'll go down to pages, say it was on uh, page 280, uh, 227. Nope, 827, that's it. 827, we'll go OK. And then that will automatically populate the page number that we got our direct quote from. I hope this helps, guys. Um, oh, probably one last thing, if you wanted to add another quote from the other reference, um, you can insert here and you can see that it automatically rearranges and updates the bibliography or reference list. I really hope this helps, guys, for all those Mac users out there. Um, unfortunately, us Mac users can't just click on the file like the Windows users can because of security reasons. Um, so we do have to go the long way and manually import or go file import for each different file that we download. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night and uh, stay tuned for more videos on how-tos that hopefully are useful to someone. Thank you.